Hi, my name's Matt, and welcome to Dwarf Fortress, the indie game available free of charge from Bay 12 Games, which uh, is kind of like SimCity or Populous, uh, but is a lot more fun. Now, uh, you can either download the game straight from the, uh, the website themselves, Bay 12 Games, or you can actually download a starter pack for new players called the Nazy New Pack, which you can see here, uh, which uh, is available from the Bay 12 Forums, bay12forums.com, and the link there, uh, which I will put in the, uh, in the description. And the music today is being provided by Polyfinks, very kindly, um, which is the Dwarf Fortress theme on the piano. Isn't that lovely? So, the lazy new pack, once downloaded, will result in a uh, little window like this, which will give you a lot of options with which to control Dwarf Fortress, um, to optimise it, and I'll just go through these very quickly, just to optimise it for my system, which, uh, which although was quite good a few years ago, is now showing its age. And uh, actually, because this version of Dwarf Fortress uh, is single core, Unfortunately, uh, my, uh, my processor does have a lot of cores, but they're all quite weak. So I'll be changing the population cap from 200 to, uh, we'll say 160. Uh, the child cap we will change simply because children are pretty much useless, and we don't want a, a fort full of children. So we'll say no more than 60 children, which I think is plenty. And uh, the percentage of children will say 30%. That uh, should be fine. Um, the strict population cap, after which there won't even be any more births, uh, shall we say, uh, we'll say 200. And the vis visitor cap we can leave as it is, the soldier cap we can leave as it is. You can choose to play a peaceful game where you, uh, you won't have any goblin invaders, but uh, we'll leave those on. The uh, other options here for cave-ins, uh, for temperature, weather and artifacts, they are some of the most interesting features of the game, so we'll leave those on. Um, aquifers can be very annoying, so I'll leave that as no. It's totally up to yourself if you'd like to use them. Some people love aquifers, you can work around them. Um, they're a source of fresh water. I myself just find them to be a pain in the behind. Um, I will also change the option to Entomb Pets to no, simply because I don't want them to be taking up a coffin every time a stray turkey poult dies. So. Now, the uh, next tab is Graphics, um, which gives you a, a list of um, tile sets to be able to choose from. My own favourite is the Iron Hand set, which I've been using for some time. I think it comes pre-installed with Phoebus, so I'm not sure, but our Iron Hand is the one I'll be using today. And there are just a couple of options on here, um, which are, one of which I would like to change, and that's Liquid Depth. I do want it to show the other uh, depth of liquid, such as water or magma, in my fort. For utilities, we'll be using Dwarf Therapist. There are a whole host of utilities for which uh, other tutorials have been done, which I won't go into today, but Dwarf Therapist is absolutely essential, and a DF Hack will also automatically start up. So I'll uh, say a couple of words about those. As far as the Advanced tab goes, I'll be uh, turning the sound off because, uh, as previously mentioned, Polly thinks there is... Uh, giving us the uh, audio. Intro movie, I'll leave you to watch that if you download that for yourself and our window we do need. Auto save, we will change that to seasonal in case of crash and also initial save, we will change to, uh, to yes again in case it does crash. It's very stable these days but our accidents do happen. Pause on save, we will leave as no, so you can AFK and leave the game alone if necessary. Um, pause on load, yes, so we can take stock of where we are. We won't back up the saves, but we will compress them. And uh, as far as DF hack goes, I, I don't really have much experience in DF hack. It kind of runs in the background and provides a couple of much needed 
bug fixes um, and you can give it commands and tell it to do certain things but I, I generally just leave it to, uh, to run on its own okay so having said all of that let's play Dwarf Fortress so I'm pressing the uh, button at the bottom there and the first couple of windows which pop up there are the utilities Dwarf Therapist which is just telling us there is no version of Dwarf Fortress running right now there will be in a second and uh, DF Hack which as I say will just run in the background and uh, look after a few little annoying bugs and uh, let's maximize this window so the first thing you would need to do normally is to create a new world and I'll just say a couple of words about that I do have one pre-made so we won't need to go through the whole process just says a few words about it being the alpha so um, the world I created was a medium sized world which uh, is 129 by 129 tiles the history I had as a long history 550 years the more history you have the more interesting things happen the more civilizations can rise and fall uh, possibly some civilizations some entire races can be extinguished um, there's a small chance of that longer as time goes on generally goblins and elves do best in the longer situation in the uh, longer uh, worlds the longer history worlds these civilizations I believe for this uh, for this particular world I left as medium and along with a number of sites however the number of beasts and the natural savagery both were high uh, simply because I wanted to have a more challenging environment and a bit more of an interesting playthrough and uh, because I didn't want to be struggling to find ores I actually did put the mineral occurrence too frequent but I uh, will just go to start playing now you do have given two options here I'll be playing in fortress mode which is more like the traditional sim city you can play as in adventure mode which would be more of a traditional road roguelike uh, but I don't have too much experience in adventure mode I'll be playing fortress mode today so when your world has generated and you've selected fortress mode your first task will be to select a location for your fortress and they've made it very easy to do so um, with the tool if you just press F you're given a list of options with which to find the desirable location so uh, the uh, first couple of uh, criterions here being X and Y dimensions and uh, we'll just leave those as four savagery doesn't really matter to us evil again doesn't matter it can make for an interesting playthrough to have an evil environment elevation and temperature don't really matter nor do rain and drainage flux stone that matters to me I want to be able to make steel and flux stone let's see if, if we have access to iron let's just make steel on demand and even if you don't have iron containing ore in your site, you can still make goblinite by melting down the iron weapons which our invading goblin forces bring. That can be quite effective. Uh, aqu aquifers, there shouldn't be any. Uh, and rivers don't really matter too much to me. Metals do, however, so we do want some metals shallow and deep if, uh, if possible and uh, soil we want more than more than a little uh, e equal or more than some shall we say and uh, it would be nice to have some clay and now if we just press enter it will do the search for us It's finished its search and uh, if we just hit escape we'll be able to browse those results now the uh, very right hand window is the world on the uh, in the middle is the region and then the very right hand side there is the extreme local area uh, which uh, which will actually be uh, selecting the exact location your fortress will be in we'll select that in a second so in the middle one, the largest window region, you might be able to see in the very centre there a little yellow X which is creeping along. And let's have a look at one of the uh, 
green flashing X's. Let's see what we have. So this particular location is called the Frilly Murk. It's a temperate freshwater swamp. Uh, it's heavily forested with thick vegetation. It's in the wilderness and uh, has uh, sand, some soil, shallow and deep metals and a flux stone layer. We can have a look at some more information by pressing tab. So you can see the neighbours there, dwarves, goblins, humans and elves. So that could be quite interesting. Uh, our civilization, the playful, the playful syrups. Syrup being a type of wig, mm, a playful wig, that's hilarious. Um, here you can see um, the relative elevation and in the very, very left hand window, the local window, you'll be able to see um, exactly where you'll be locating. You see the highlighted window just moving there. See if I can make this slightly bigger. There we go. And with U, M, K, and H, you're actually able to move the uh, move the small area around and select the precise location. Whoops, did not mean to do that. And select the precise location. You'd be looking to embark in. Now let's see. That looks. Uh, Kind of okay to me. I'll just tap back through. Let's see which biomes there are. If there are, if there is more than one biome in a particular location, you'll be able to see uh, in the in the bottom of the uh, the text down here F1 and F2 view biome. Let's have a quick look at those. Well, there's the first biome running down the middle, which is sand, little soil, temperate, heavily forested, etc. The second one is kind of off to the side there, and that is no trees, thick other vegetation, it's again temperate, no trees, that could be a problem. That takes up quite a few, that takes up five, six, six of our 16 tiles, that's quite a lot, that's more than I'd like. Let's go back to the relative elevation. See where we were. Slopes rather, isn't it? Not relative elevation. Okay. If I just move over just slightly, how would that be? That's brilliant. Okay. I think we're ready to embark. Once we've selected an area, hit E to go to the preparation menu. And one of the advantages of the um, embarking menu is that, uh, of the lazy new pack rather, is that the a lot of the embarking uh, hard work has been done for you. A lot of the preparation has been already um, calculated to some degree. So all of these um, sets of dwarves and uh, equipment here will quite likely be uh, be all you need to survive especially if you are a new player there are a couple of easy peasy start there's an easy peasy start easy start there for a new tutorial for a new player tutorial which uh, I believe is possibly from the captain duck tutorials uh, but I'll be starting preparing for the journey carefully and the first thing you'll be asked to do is allocate points to your dwarves to uh, to turn them into various professions. So the first dwarf here being a miner, tradi traditionally a miner, the first and second dwarf. And uh, the third dwarf traditionally is a woodcutter. And I also like to modify these slightly by having the first dwarf also as the leader of the party. So let's say he's a... He's an adequate leader, and um, because he will most likely be taking care of trading on our behalf, we'll need him to be an appraiser as well, uh, so we'll make him an adequate appraiser. And the um, woodcutting dwarf, because he'll be an axe user, we might as well make him an axe dwarf. Where are we? 
for an axe man. There we go. So we'll have him as a competent axe dwarf. And I think we better make him a dodger as well, just to give him a little bit more of a chance and adequate dodger. Don't worry about running out of points here because you do get plenty of points back from items which you really don't need. Now the uh, fourth dwarf we will call our craftsman, so he'll be investing in skills such as carpentry, masonry, um, let's see, stone crafting, that should be fine for the moment, competent carpenter, mason and stone crafter, if there's anything I've forgotten I'm sure it'll come back to me later. Now the, uh, the next two really should be farmers, so uh, let's call this one a grower and also a cook. Cook and a brewer, so he'll be kind of a kitchen dwarf, uh, he'll look after their food needs. Uh, the second one we'll have also as a grower uh, but also as a herbalist as well. So he'll go and gather plants uh, from the outdoors and that will tide us over hopefully in times of need if there ever are any, which um, farming isn't too taxing, we should be fine. And the final dwarf generally is some kind of um, marked dwarf, usually a hunter, so uh, that's what we'll go with today. We'll go with um, Ambusher. There's nothing for Hunter there. I can't see Hunter. We'll also uh, have him a Butcher and Tanner to look after his own kills. Um, and we'll want him to have some kind of skill in crossbows, the traditional dwarf and weapon. And uh, by giving him a uh, crossbow, you're also making a uh, potential archer just in case anyone does. Uh, kind of attack your fort, any giant animals or any kobold thieves in the first couple of years, him and the other uh, woodcutter hopefully will be able to deal with those. Now we've only got 34 points left you might be thinking which is not going to be enough for, uh, for, for the items and, and animals which we might need, which uh, you can get to the others by, uh, by tabbing I should have said. Well there are quite a few items which uh, it supplies you with automatically which you just don't need and uh, let's just see copper battle axes well we'll need one of those not two um, iron anvils yes we will need one of those dwarven wine and ale definitely will keep those and the plump helmet spawn all of the other seeds the newt intestines can't go wrong with those cave lobster excellent What's this down here? Uh, buckets. Well, we can make buckets straight away when we get there. Same goes for splints, same goes for crutches. Wheelbarrows, 50 points. And step ladders, 50 points. Wow. That's way more wheelbarrow action than we'll ever need for some time. And we can just make them straight away. So it's really not worth it. What we will do, also, you know, thread. We don't need that much thread. We don't need that much cloth. The bags we don't need. We can bring other items such as sand or uh, gypsum powder which uh, which also come in bags and uh, you get the bag for free. Uh, ropes. Well, do you know what? I'll keep one rope. Um, the cloth we can trade for. We don't need any of that. Thread I'll keep just in case someone needs suturing. So we've now got 526 points and the first thing I'm going to do is look at animals. Right at the top here, turkeys, which uh, come in very handy, a very overpowered animal. They give you um, leather, they give you meat um, and eggs as well. So uh, we'll be taking a turkey cobbler and three turkey hens. And next down we have dogs, we'll need three female dogs. And I'll also take uh, a male dog and a male hunting dog to assist our hunter. 
and we will need a couple of cats to deal with any vermin. Uh, mules and donkeys, horses, you'll get those in migration waves if you need them. Um, I wouldn't suggest spending any points on them now, so not cows. Um, ewes and lambs and pigs, possibly if we have enough points left over. Goats, I would suggest definitely. I'm going to get uh, at least one of each, a nanny and a billy. And uh, oh, chickens as well. So let's uh, get three chickens and one rooster again for the meat and for the eggs. Unfortunately, you don't get leather from them. Um, so, what else do we have for this particular civilization? Rabbits, um, guinea hens, peacocks, ducks. Not really worth it. Um, I think I will take some pigs. Pigs are very easy to look after. There we go, a sow and a boar, um, and um, they, they give a lot of meat. And now let's look at getting the, uh, the rest of our points in a bit more food. So a dwarf and wine, you can never go wrong with that. Your dwarves can never have enough drink. Dwarf and ale, by the same principle, they can never have too much. Um, for seeds, I'm definitely going to take some more seeds double the number of seeds simply because farming is uh, it's essential to keeping your dwarves alive and it's easy to do well it's easy to do correctly uh, but certainly seeds do help more seeds do help especially if you forget to go into your kitchen menu and stop your dwarves from eating any new seeds which may be grown okay what else do we have here uh, plump helmets, we'll certainly take a few more of those, they are a very popular food source. And uh, turkey leather, quiv deer leather quivers, how did that slip the, the noose there? We only need one of those, we'll just keep one of those. And let's add a couple more items, new items. So N for new. And I think I'll need some ammunition. that be on the weapons? Oh no, ammo, there we go. And copper bolts, so our hunter can do some hunting straight away. 15 should be sufficient. He can always reuse them. And uh, let's add a few more food items, so some, some prepared dingo lung. Can't beat that. Some fish, possibly. Pond turtle. Yeah, I hear that's good for the liver. Um, eggs, we won't bring those. The, uh, the birds will be laying those before long. Um, anything else really worth bringing? Um, we'll bring some sand because that will allow us to, uh, to get the free bag which comes with it. And we'll just get one of each. So it's a very cheap way to get uh, bags there. Also, you do get barrels with um, with any liquid. So if you just get one of a cheap liquid, you'll get a free barrel once that liquid's been used. It's a little trick there. Um, what else do we need to bring? I would say cave lobster. It was already on there. Um, once they've eaten cave lobster, the dwarves will leave shell as a residue, which can otherwise be quite hard to get hold of, um, and can send your dwarves mad if they go into a strange mood and need shell, but don't have access to it. What else do we have here? Chips and plaster, yeah, we'll bring some of that. Just in case a dwarf breaks his leg in the first year. It shouldn't happen, but it is certainly possible. I'll just put in a lie there and spend the rest of the money on booze. That's what a real dwarf would do, I'm sure. Okay, there we go. So we've got zero points remaining. Anything remaining to do now is to uh, name our fortress and our group. So it's a shift F to name the fortress. Currently called Torch Evens. You can select a name from a list of pre-selected, uh, pre-ordained words, um, or you can just press R to get a random one. Hood Mirror. Mm, let's keep going. Mirror Mansion. What is it with mirrors today? I think we found our purpose.
graphic name, Axe Right. I certainly intend to be doing a lot of axe work. And we just press exit, uh, escape to exit out of that. And let's name the group themselves. So that's Shift G. And uh, they're called the Diamond of Blocking at the moment. Do you know, I'm going to keep that. I think that's great, the Diamond of Blocking. And now we're all ready. We'll press E to embark. You have arrived. After a journey from the mountain homes into the forbidding wilderness beyond, your harsh trek has finally ended. Your party of seven is to make an outpost for the glory of all Tithalhid. Well, I can't pronounce that. I assume that's the name of the civilization in Dwarfish. Or possibly Flemish. There are almost no supplies left, but with stout labour comes sustenance. Whether by bolt, plough or hook, provide for your dwarves. You are expecting a supply caravan just before winter entombs you, but it is spring now. Enough time to delve secure lodgings ere the dingoes get hungry. A new chapter of dwarven history begins here at this place. Libashkirar, Axe Right. Strike the earth. And here we are. The uh, structure you can see there in the middle is the Dwarven Caravan with all of our dwarves around it, our various livestock. And uh, I'll just get rid of the menu just by hitting tab just so we can get a bit more of a view. You can see uh, the environment there. This is just one Z level. You can move up and down the Z levels with the, uh, oh, I don't know what they're called, the, uh, if you just press shift and uh, full stop or comma to go up and full stop to go down and so we can get an idea of exactly where we are in our map so we've got quite a good open plain there uh, some mountains over towards this side uh, a couple of lakes which seem to be frozen at the moment let's have a quick look yeah that's ice And uh, quite a nice area on the top of that mountain there, possibly for a nice lookout post at some point. Okay, well I'm actually very happy with this uh, with this embark. This embark looks like it's got everything. It's got plenty of trees, plenty of uh, plants to keep me happy. So uh, I look forward to the next episode, setting up the fort, and I hope you all join me then. Thank you very much.